Okay, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for the final power rankings edition this season. This is such a precarious point in the season. As I've said in previous videos, if you haven't already, it's worth checking out my footy tipping video this week because I went through different you know, possibilities of the way this final round could go and affect the actual ladder. But right now, we're going to be more concerned with the actual form rankings of teams as it currently stands. So like I always do, I start from the bottom of 18th and I work my way up to 1st. I don't think I'm going to progress with this series going into the finals. Obviously, it's still kind of relevant to have form rankings, um, but I may just, you know, package that content a little bit differently. I'm obviously going to be covering the finals, covering all the trade and draft and stuff as well after that. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do to keep up with all that content. All right, without further ado, let's crack into this ranking. So we start from the bottom and we go to the top. So I'm going to start with the same bottom three as we've had all year. Richmond, clearly 18th, again, you know, most recent game, big loss to Hawthorne. Nothing really too much to read out of it, but they've had two wins all year, lost all their last five, and uh, they stay there. North Melbourne, I have in 17th. Now, I was very tempted to drop West Coast below them, so I've got West Coast still in 16th. Uh, but, you know, in a week where West Coast got belted by Carlton and it was very shameful, North still lost by like 98 or 96 points this week, so both teams took a massive hit. And therefore, I don't feel the need to really change those rankings at the moment. And also, given West Coast has won an extra game in the last five, when one of them being against North away from home, I think those bottom three are pretty much set. So then we move to the tricky part. It's always the tricky part after the bottom three. And I think I'm going to go with Essendon this week. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think Essendon is a bottom four side on quality. It's just, I think it will make more sense when you see the rest of the rankings progress. I don't think Essendon's been going horrifically. Their most recent game was a loss to Sydney by about six or seven goals. Um, you know, other than that, they've you know won a close game against Fremantle. They lost a close game to the Suns. Um, they lost a close game to Adelaide, and they did get belt and belted by St Kilda. But you know, against the rest of the competition, that form line isn't great. So I have Gold Coast just ahead of them. Gold Coast coming off a poor loss against Melbourne. Pretty disappointing effort at home where they've been pretty damn good this year, save for the most recent two home games. The Gold Coast have also beaten Essen in their last five, so I think justifiably they take one spot higher. Then I've got Melbourne bumping up to 13th. They're the first team to move up the rankings in this week's edition. So again, these three teams of Melbourne, Gold Coast, and Essendon have all won one of their last five. And if you just look at the head-to-head, Gold Coast have beaten Essendon, and Melbourne have beaten both of them. Melbourne v Essendon was more than five weeks ago, but I've kind of ranked it based on the head-to-head, -head. and Melbourne's most recent win was quite impressive. I thought things really clicked at a time where I thought Melbourne might sort of descend and let this season unravel. They had a good win, so they justifiably move up to 13th. Carlton's good win over West Coast takes them to 12th. So they've won two of their last five, which is more so than any other team below them, except West Coast, believe it or not, who have also won two of their last five. But Carlton's win was very impressive. Not the toughest opposition, but over the stretch, save for a bad loss to Hawthorne, and the, considering the character and the, how depleted Carlton were in that game against West Coast to just put them to the sword, boost them up the rankings, and hopefully they, from their perspective, will go one step further this week against St Kilda because they do need to win that game. I've got Adelaide just ahead of them. They've also won two of their last five uh, with wins over Essendon away and a really good win against the Bulldogs. Honourable loss against the Power. A, a close loss to Geelong in that time and then a big loss at home to Hawthorne. So that puts them just below middle. Fremantle slipped to 10th. They have won just two of their last five games and lost three on the bounce. So they won two and then lost three in a row. Those wins were against Melbourne, comfortable victory, and against a West Coast that played well for half a game and they ran away by six goals in the end. Their losses have been tough against the Bombers. Away, they did let that slip. Geelong is a tough opponent at home, narrow loss. Took it up to GWS in Sydney, narrow loss. So I think that puts them at about 10th. And I've got Collingwood leapfrogging them on current form. So they've won three of their last five, which is better than Fremantle, with wins over Richmond, Carlton, and most recently the Brisbane Lions. And that is a good win. They traded the whole game, came back and won. More wins than losses in the last five. Again, it's not enough to play finals, but um, you know, I think Collingwood on current form, they need to be given that credit, and they're pretty much smack bang in the middle. Ninth is exactly where they are on the ladder too, funnily enough. Sydney bounced back into the eight after, you know, how many losses in a row was it? So a series of losses. They've won their last two, and they've beaten, you know, Essendon most recently. They beat Collingwood the week before that. So just starting to get some momentum back. Obviously, given the fact that they've beaten Collingwood 
recently. I've got them slightly ahead of the pies, although don't feel strongly about that. Still waiting to see if Sydney can confirm that they're back. I still don't think they're there yet, but if they can flex a little bit of muscle against the Crows this weekend, go into the finals, full head of steam, I still think they're a genuine flag chance. Geelong go down to seventh with their most recent loss against St Kilda. Other than that, it had been a very good run of form. They beat North, they beat the Crows, they beat the Dockers in Perth. The Dockers in Perth was the best win out of that lot. They had a bad loss to the Bulldogs and a kind of bad loss against St Kilda. I think St Kilda are pretty good and certainly played well in that game. So I don't mark them too harshly for that, but they do have to drop down the rankings. And St Kilda now up into the top six on current form. Won four of their last five. They've also had recent wins against, well, Sydney, who's just below them, and the Cats, obviously, most recently. They've also beaten the Eagles, the Bombers, and the Tigers, and they've had one loss against the Lions. Now, that loss against the Lions was terrible, but it is an outlier out of a lot of their recent form. So we move up now to the Brisbane Lions, who slowly drop. They've lost two in a row and therefore get leapfrogged by some better teams in current form. So they've won three of their last five. They've beaten the Swans, good win. They've beaten the Suns at Metricon, good win. And they slaughtered St Kilda. That was a great effort. Narrow loss to the Giants at home. Narrow loss to the Pies at the G. Again, these are not horrible losses, although they have come at a horrible time because it has cost them top four, most likely. Hawthorne, back into the top four on current rankings with a good win on the weekend against Richmond. Again, not tough opposition, but their win coincides with Brisbane's drop-off, so they move up a spot. Again, who knows what to make of them in the finals. It'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Same thing for the Western Bulldogs, who, again, are third and not a guarantee to play in the finals this season. That's how crazy this final round's going to be. But across their form... Out of the last five, they've had one bad loss against Adelaide. They beat the Cats significantly in Geelong. They beat the Swans significantly in Sydney. Far too good for Melbourne and absolutely punished the Roos. So the Dogs and Hawthorne remain kind of wild cards this final series as I think they're the third and fourth best teams in the comp on current form. It's a crazy season, huh? So there's two teams that sit above the rest who have won all five of their last five games. And that's GWS and Port Adelaide in that order. I've still got GWS number one, retaining the ranking with a good win over Fremantle on the weekend. And the power, I said before, the showdown could have been a banana skin game for them. And I think it showed maturity and a little bit of growth that they overcame a halftime deficit to win that game. They're in really good form. I think GWS and Port Adelaide, clearly the two form sides of the competition as it currently stands, with both sides competing for a top four spot. The Power most likely will get there, I think. The Power do have a tough game in Perth against Fremantle, which I think is going to be a tricky prospect for them. But either way, that is the way I see the form rankings of the competition right now. It's really interesting to compare that and cross-reference that with the actual ladder right now, because St Kilda, sixth best side in the competition over the last five weeks, are not even close to featuring in the finals. And it's possible that the Bulldogs and Hawthorne, it's possible that only one of them actually make the eight. Sydney are first on the ladder, and likely to sew that up. Even if they lose, I think they're a good chance to finish top spot, but only an eighth position on current form. So we do know that form only means so much, particularly when there's a pre-finals buy, and it will matter much more how the teams come out after that when the first week of finals kicks off. But that's all I've got for you this week, guys. I've really enjoyed this series. I say that loosely. Sometimes it's been a massive pain in the ass, but it is still a fun activity, and I hope you got something out of it this year. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.